What's up once again YouTube? Um, tonight we want to talk about next gen console live streaming because for a lot of years um, who've done it on you know your Xboxes etc, uh, Xbox 360 that is, um, you've probably come across a time when you've realised that you've had a recording lag and what, what most of us used to do was we'd split the inputs out on the actual back of the Harpag or, or whatever system we used at the time. Uh, now obviously moving across to, to next gen we're, we're faced with a slightly different dilemma uh, unless of course you uh, use an Elgato um, it's HDMI which you know the Elgato is there anyway but the, the, the original Harpag wasn't so the question is how are you going to stop the recording lag on the Elgato that you used to stop on the Harpag so you need a splitter in effect don't you so, so what we've done is we've, we've actually got hold of uh, a splitter there's a HDMI splitter, it's a 3D HDMI splitter so first of all we're going to do um, a quick run through on the box so as you can see on the front of the box it's a uh, HD digital audio and video entertainment uh, made by Professional Room Entertainment um, on the side we've got the logo, same on the other side we have the logo and then on the back we have a cool bunch of stuff that tells you that basically it's CE compliant it's got uh, a tick with an arrow a HS um, and basic other stuff FC um, a swirly, swirly box and uh, don't throw it in the bin so, so that's pretty basic on the back they've, uh, they've got a list of products their product lines include HDMI splitter, HDMI converter, HDD player, CVBS, YP, uh, y, YPBPR, stroke, VGAS, dash video, dash DVI converter. It's a mouthful. Uh, multi system PAL NTSC converter, game console video converter, and digital audio converter all quite impressive products with little pictures just at the little at the bottom of there so first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to open this box up and I'm going to show you the inside so so basically you've got a a, car, a a cardboard box with a plastic blister pack inside straight on the top there you've got a, a HDMI 3D splitter 1 times 4 um, just delving a little bit deeper into the box before we touch that uh, we have it's very very basic literally uh, a power card that's an EU power card and a pretty small but probably effective manual and that is uh, an empty box so pretty much the whole, the whole thing revolves around the HDMI 3D splitter so, so this, is, this is basically um, the splitter size which isn't far off an Elgato if, if you look it's uh, quite similar a little bit longer definitely heavier I'll come to that in a, in a short while as to why um, and the only thing in here is the actual box so on the front of the box we have uh, an on off switch we have a, a power LED we have an, uh, an input LED and we have output 1, 2, 3 and 4 so we have you know a combination of 6 LEDs a simple on off press button on the front also and then as you can see on the top it tells you exactly what it is on the tin and a reason I say tin is that where the, that's where the weight is this is of metal construction um, on the back starting on this side we have um, a DC 5 volt port um, we have the input and then we have the four upper outputs which run actually parallel with the LEDs on the other side and that's pretty much it so what I'm going to do I mean it's not too heavy and it's not too light it actually feels quite quality so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually plug this in and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to split my uh, Xbox One across this and I'm going to see what the output's like now one thing I will know about this particular device is that because it's got four outputs what it'll do is it will actually check or whichever outputs you've got plugged in it will look at the actual quality that, that output uh, can, can actually receive top end 
and it will adjust all four outputs to the lowest output of the four. So if one item is running in 1080p and the other item that you've got plugged in is running in 720p for example, it will run both in 720p. So there's a little bit of um, exactness to get right in your settings and stuff before you actually go into using this baby. But whatever, we'll, uh, we'll take a look and we'll see how it actually turns out, yeah? So guys, right, so we've got the system set up. So what I'm gonna do, even though my desk is a mess because I've got an Xbox 360, an Xbox One, Astros, and wires galore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give you a little quick rundown on what I've got here and now, what I will tell you first of all is, <laughs> the output from the splitter to the TV is looking absolutely fantastic. It, I, I cannot see a difference. So we'll just quickly uh, give you a little rundown on what, how I've got it set up uh, and we'll, we'll basically let you make your own mind up. So there's need for speed at the moment. Now this is the, the direct um, feed if you like from the back, from output two of, of this little unit that I've set up just temporarily. This is going to get integrated into my system. You'll see what I mean about my, uh, my desk by the way. It's, uh, full of everything, more pads and stuff than you can shake a stick at. But yeah, so looking at that, I mean, that is actually looking really good. So it's not looking any different than, than literally playing the Xbox One straight away. But the only difference is with this, is that on the Elgato side, now what we've, what we've got basically, is we've got the Xbox One, running into, into the back of the port which is this input here and then we've got two outputs that one which is going to the Elgato and that one which is going direct to TV so I, I, I'm basically removing the Elgato's video lag um, here we'll have the Elgato we've got the USB port plugged in for power and for recording we've got an input but as you'll see here we have absolutely zero output there's no output coming from that So what that gives us is it gives us the ability to record and play but without, without the actual lag. Exactly the same as we used to have. Um, I'll just switch back to the, to the PC because it's on the same screen. So as you'll, as you'll see, you've got your little box there coming up. So it is, it is recording. I've got it on flashback record as well, so it'll record and you can skip back through it and just record any segments you want to. Uh, apologies for the, uh, you know, my ugly mugging the TV, but so basically that's what I've done. So it, it looks really great. Now what I'm going to do is after the, at the end of this video, I'm going to actually upload a little bit of gameplay footage in Need for Speed. Um, I've got it saved at 1080. So I'm going to join the two clips together and I'm going to show you exactly how it looks. Uh, so that, ladies and gents, is the Professional Room Entertainment 3D 4, uh, 1 to 4 Amplified HDMI Splitter. And it's looking like a very nice piece of kit. Now you can pick this kit up for about, it's about 30 quid on eBay. So. Um, but we'll, we'll drop the links on the video, okay? Thank you very much. So, the first thing we need to do is grab ourselves a set of wheels. I'm going to go with the BMW M6 Coupe. It's quite weird how the uh, faster cars are lower down in this game, and some of the less speedier looking cars are actually at the top. Let's hope that changes a little bit. Now we're going to add in some Pursuit Tech in the form of EMP and shock ram just to cause nuisance to those runaway drivers I must admit I haven't played a lot of Need for Speed um, not played a lot of a lot of my Xbox One games properly yet but there's plenty of time yet don't forget we're going to be starting a new live stream channel soon as well uh, hopefully a 12 hour one to start with and first off in the map we are going to be looking towards some of the windier roads because this will help look for 
any problems with the picture. So we're looking for a car which we've just spotted there. So we're going to start at that point. It's worth noting that I'm, I've actually recorded this once and I'm trying it again on a, a new video software. I really do hate how that does not skip straight to the car. Now we're just going to jump in the map because we're not too sure whether that car's turned up this T-junction that we're actually sat on. Which it actually hasn't. So we're going to have to spin it round and then give Pursuit. I could have the slip road there, but never mind. I wasn't sure if it sucked me back into the uh, menu, but because it's been a while. But well, here we go. I'm going to be chasing this guy. Getting that speed up. Start using some of this pursuit tech. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to crash a few times because I'm going to be watching. I was watching this while I was actually recording it to watch the top right hand corners of the map which are going to spin quite quickly on some of these windier roads which means I take me eye out the ball sometimes um, not a lot I can do about that I should have really looked afterwards but I was looking actually directly at the time during the game I should have actually just done it afterwards and then just narrated over it but, but as you can probably tell we're not seeing a hell of a lot going wrong with the picture, if anything. Indeed, I couldn't really see anything. And if there is anything that you see, to be honest with you, the chances are it may be caused by the rendering software over the, the actual HDMI device and its effect on the Elgato. I really need to use more Noz though because I'm not really pounding it. And when I do, I tend to overshoot. And I'm baffled as to why this car does that turn. It seems to flip out like it's trying to do a U turn, but it doesn't. Oh well. On with the chase. This is a good corner to see. Unfortunately, I was too busy looking to have a car. So back in pursuit. If this turns out okay, though, you should be able to see that it is very, it is very smooth. The TV itself was watching the Elgato back was at the moment though during recording. It's actually a little bit laggy for me to watch. When I say recording, I mean doing the narration. But hey ho, let's hope it turns out okay. Oops, wrong way. Let's turn it around. So overall, I deem the device to be actually 5 out of 5. I really can't knock it. From what I saw live, it, it seemed like a really good device. I'm going to actually be keeping this. I did buy it actually for live streaming to help reduce the any kind of lag, recording lag that you would get with the Elgato. I mean, your other options are of course the Harpag Gaming Gaming Edition uh, Mark II, which apparently doesn't it has a, a pass through, so you don't actually get any recording lag. It's something along them lines. You have to research it yourself. I haven't tried one, at least not yet. down. That was nearly a T-ball, that, that should have been a T-ball. Didn't see him up with anything though. Oops, we passed them. Yeah, all in all, overall, overall productability, I, I love it. So let us know what you think guys, the um, guys down now. So that is pretty much it. So drop us a comment. Let us know what you think. Thanks.